Hi, April Line, you're watching Kay and Fitzwater, and we are going to play a story game this time around. I feel this is a good breaking point in all the D&D storytelling I've been doing about um, my family's current D&D game, and I thought it would be fun to bring in a story-rich game such as Our Life. This is a game that was released back in November of last year, and I did not see this anywhere on the radars from any gamers, um, as far as I know of, and I played it on my own earlier this week, and I realized I have to share this. I gotta share this game, it's been so much fun, and... Here we are. And I will try to create the same type of choices I had made in my first playthrough. And I'll let you know when everything is wholly new to me. Maybe I should tell what this game is. Um, this is one of those um, choose your own adventure um, visual novel games. Um, except all the choices you make in this story affects how your relationship develops with this character which is Cope that we're seeing here and depending on how we react to their choices um, from childhood on up would determine our uh, relationship whether it is romance whether it's friendship or whether it's just, you know, this is the kid that grew up with me on the street type of thing. Um, we have everything, you know, all um, laid out for us. It's up to us whether we get to pick and choose how we're going to go forward. Um, when I do these playthroughs um, in romance options, um, it's rare I ever get a accurate <laughs> um, type of game uh, where um, it says, oh, you know, if you would just want to have a very platonic friendship with everyone, you know, you don't have to saddle up, you know, in a romance, um, how your interactions with them don't always mean, yes, we're going to be in this, you know, full-on sexual relationship. So as a demisexual, it's rare to find those kind of games where you could just have a platonic relationship that may blossom into, you know, a romance. And it's not just such a whipneck kind of speed. It's not railroad you into this um, shipment. Um, the last type of game I've seen that type of freedom was in Dragon Age um, Inquisition if I remember right. No, not Inquisition. It's the second Dragon Age game. Um, and even though I was really um, belorning over Fenris a lot, you know, the choices I made in that game in the first playthrough didn't work out, you know. And I just have to deal with it. And it was nice to see that kind of interaction. And of course, it occurs many playthroughs. Um, and it's just nice to see that kind of, you know, thing develops. Um, so I can't wait to see how this comes about in our relationship or, you know, just whether it blossoms into a friendship or whether it blossoms into, you know, nothing so I like to see where my actions go um, another thing I want to try to do is harken back the kind of uh, choices I would have done based on that age um, type you started out at um, age 8 in this whole relationship and you progress through each um, significant summer point um, and I'm going to try my best to make the choices I would have done at that time if I was living there. And, you know, sometimes those choices are not going to be good choices. 
some of those choices are going to be, you know, not helpful of the situation. Um, in my first playthrough for the couple of hours, um, I realized that, you know, maybe I should have made different choices um, to make things a little bit better and not be so, you know, put off of things. Um, but that's life, you know, and you have to deal with the consequences of those actions. So I like this game. Um, and we're going to dive in. And we're going to showcase this game um, for every hour, I want to say. And see if you guys like our um, playthroughs. And if you don't, um, I'll try to shorten it or make it longer. Maybe you guys um, like longer playthroughs. Um, but I've been seeing a lot of people doing an hour um, gameplay. So we'll do an hour and um, pick it up for the rest of this month. Um, for the next um, Fridays, we're going to be playing this um, game. And then we'll go back to um, Dungeons and Dragons um, and try to bring everyone up to speed with what's going on in the family um, Dungeons and Dragons game. <sighs> I love the animation. Love the music. Oh god. Um, you know... Yes, I'm going to do it just to let everyone know how this works. Um, all these choices are color coordinated. Welcome to our life, beginnings and always. There are various ways you can customize and interact with the game. This tutorial is an overview of how certain features work. You can read the full tutorial from the main page to learn about everything in detail. To start off, the game is divided into three time periods called Steps. Step 1, Childhood. Step 2, Adolescence. And Step 3, Teenage. I think Teenage is, should be Teenager. But, I don't know, maybe that is the correct way of um, spelling it. Our life is further divided into a set of vignettes that take place during specific periods of time. These are called moments. Moments can be played in any order or skip entirely. You move on to the next step whenever you want by selecting that summer is ending. Steps 1 to 3 include 5 moments each. Even more can be unlocked by purchasing DLCs. Some of are out now and other DLCs will be released later on. So a little input here. I did not purchase the DLCs because this game is free and I don't want to play all the DLCs and everyone just watch my channel and never go into this game. So if you like this game and want to try it out yourself, um, I'm not going to spoil the DLCs for you so that way you could interact with them in your own pace, in your own experience and it won't be uh, tarnished by my gameplay if you happen to spoil yourself before purchasing this. A lot happens over the years that go by, especially in regard to the character you play as. You determine nearly everything about the main character. Name, appearance, personality, pronouns, interests, skills, the relationship with major characters, and so on. You can decide to change. You... <laughs> oh gosh, bear with me. You can decide to change the details as time goes on, with a few exceptions. Your last name, skin tone, and eye color won't be altered once set. So essentially, um, what we establish for name, skin tone, and eye color can't be altered. Uh, much of the main character's basic traits are determined on a character creation screen. As the main character grows up, more options become available on the screen. As mentioned, one of the decisions you get to make for your character is selecting a name. You could type in any name you like, or you can pick a pre preset name. Preset options are called voice names because the name will be voice allowed by the romantic lead. You'll get to hear him say your name as you play through the story. Now, 
Now they say romantic lead. There is a possibility it may not be a romance. Just why we're playing this game. Only the default name, Jamie, is included in the base game. Hundreds more can be added by getting a free voice name expansion DLC. I forgot. <laughs> um, I forgot to get that free name, um, name expansion. But I'm not really um, that into hearing a name, per se. And of course... If you're not interested in that feature, you don't need to add the name collection to your game file. Each name in the DLC belongs to or was selected by someone who supported this project. Oh, that's why they did that. Lastly, you can change the spelling of a name after selecting the voice option you want. For example, going from gray to gray. That was really hard. <laughs> um... For those who are writers um, and have to write storytelling or anything like that, um, anything that is American needs A, and anything that is English or European is E. So gray is American, gray with an E is English. And same thing with um, color or... Um, author or anything like that um there's usually an added you to um english publications so if you ever have to nitpick over how you spell your words um like i do uh, that is one trick i have to do on the character creation screen there's a cute doll you can decorate to get an idea of what your main character looks like with the different traits put together not all the things you decide about the main character appear on the doll this script referencing what you decide with the main character is the main way those decisions influence the game. Our life has a first-person perspective, so your character doesn't appear next to other character sprites, which is a shame. You only see the main character as the decorative doll on the character creation screens. You know, I say that it's a shame, but now I'm beginning to realize um, it's actually cost-saving. There's also a second type of special main character based screen, the interest comfort screen. Unless you get DLCs, the game has one love interest, Paul Holden. He grows up with the main character, and the interest comfort screen is crucial for determining how that plays out. Interest level sets how much you like him. There are four levels, disinterest, bond, crush, and love. Love is only available starting in step three, and if you were at bond or crush in step two, Comfort determines how you generally react, think, when it comes to him. There are three levels, nervous, relaxed, and direct. Your level of interest and comfort will set the type of dynamic your character has with the love interest. What you did in the past will influence the present, and feelings can change over time. Which is why we're playing this game! You get to pick your interest comfort near the beginning of every step. Comfort can switch between the three levels as you please. Your interest level can only stay the same or increase. Your current level of interest will become the new loves option on the screen in the future. For example, if you decide to be fond in step one, disinterest will be gone from step... Oh my gosh, I can't speak today. Disinterest will be gone from the screen in steps two and three, which will make fond the bottom level option for your relationship. Interest level has an impact when it comes to physically interacting with code. While growing up, things are rather simple. If you get along with one another and have a close relationship, you can choose to touch him. And Cove will occasionally interact with the main character in light-hearted or comforting ways. I used to be a very hugging person, but... Just like a Peter Caraboti um, doctor, I don't think I'm very much of a huggy person right now. But starting in step three, touching you can become more romantic or suggestive if you're at crush or love. To make sure things go nicely with that, there will be an extra choice to determine initiative level and a bonus mini tutorial that goes along with the choice to explain the future in more detail. 
At this point, when I was going through my playthrough, I skipped through most of this explanation. There was no way to avoid the tutorial when you start the game. So I just kept clicking through until I finally got to the creation screen and just hopped in. So some of this is a little bit new to me because I really did not want to be micromanaged how I play the game. Some of it is going to become intuitive by just looking at what you set up. So I don't know. I don't need to know all of that upfront because when you're in life, you're not going to know your status bar with other people and how you interact with them is not going to be described as oh you're nervous you're relaxed you just feel it so uh, i don't know i feel like it's taking away the initiative of the player a little bit by doing that basically if you decide to like hove hove the game won't force you to act on those feelings you can always choose not to get together with them, chose not to accept or give up romantic gestures, etc. If you decide to date Cove, though, you can't break up with him later. That is a bit of a stickler. But the whole point of the game is to fall in love with him. Well, the primary reason. So, yeah. Um... Uh, in real life, yes, you can break up crushes that you have in middle school and high school. You can totally do that. Interest, comfort, gets the basics down, but it's the choices that appear throughout the normal game events that decide what actually happens between the main character and Poe. And, it's all, and it isn't only the main character who's impacted by your decisions. Decisions. Poe grows and changes over the years. How he's treated and what he experiences help shape who he becomes. Don't we all? In steps two and three, Poe's personality, appearance, and interest will vary based on what happened in the previous step. It's something of a mystery, exactly how your decisions end up changing him. You can try to guess as you go along. Or if you prefer, you can just design your own ideal Poe, directly using the Poe creator option that pops up at the beginning of steps two and three. When I first read that, I didn't like that you're trying to fix your romantic interest by saying that. But when I was doing my playthrough, I end up actually... Um, I didn't realize I was designing Cove um, in the playthrough. Um, so when we get to that point, I'll explain later. It seemed a little bit seamless, but it's not as irksome as it was describing in this sentence. <laughs> Excuse me? And this is a really long tutorial, so let's try to get through it as quickly as possible. Making the choices you want is always more important than making a choice because you feel like you have to in order to get a certain result. When a choice does appear, usually you see that hovering the cursor over an option shows a certain color, yellow, blue, or green. The colors aren't related to the specific points of effects. They're only there to give a bit of an insight of the tone and emotion of the choice, since text alone can potentially be read in more than one way. Blue tends to be casual, straightforward, yellow more emotive, reactive, and green less certain and uncommitted. I honestly just try to go with my gut instinct, looking at the text and clicking it. But here in this um, playthrough, I will read out the choices to you and just select what I had done in my first playthrough until we finally get to the point where it's all new to me. And I'll select based on my gut. You know, that, you know, intuition that everyone has. Though there are hundreds of options in our life, and not every choice may be falls in line with that pattern. Picking just one color every time doesn't give the gameplay benefit. Only stick to a certain type if that's what you want. If that's what you happen to like, otherwise switch between them freely. Always pick yellow. Never pick yellow. Pursue romance right from the start. Never romance the love interest can be disagreeable or am amiable. Amiable? Amiable. Oh my god. None of them will lead to a bad ending. You're welcome to enjoy the events and shape the story without reservation. And then, if you like, you can play again to try something new. 
there's only ever more good content to discover. In other words, you get to have freedom of choice. They're just color coding it so that way if you're confused with the text and you're overthinking things, uh, because you really, really want to romance them, then yes, you can um, have helpful color coding options to let you know what's going on. So this is what they meant by not everything is going to show up here. In the next page, they have birthmarks and scars um, and what they wear and accessories. But you don't see that on the doll. You only see the head. And, you know, it's, it's doable. So I'm going to choose the same thing I had done. Yeah, there we go. That's it? Yeah, it was this. And we went brown. Went this. And this. Something similar to that. There's other options. I'm not going to get into that because it's going to take forever. Eh. Okay, I have a ton of freckles. And let's see. If I remember right, I had a scar on the leg, freckles on the arm, and let's see. Actually, I have freckles all over. Um, that kind of might alternate things um, in the playthrough. Uh, I'm trying to remember there's birthmarks. No, okay. Uh, when I was a kid, it was mostly this, never this. And I was doing this. No watches. And we're gonna type in Zypher player. And I was this. So I had to comment, this is so wonderful that they had they in the options. I commend the game for that. I'm really happy. Um, I think it's wonderful. So um, you can do that and you can have a uh, and you can choose how you want to have your name, and it's awesome, and I really love it. <gasps> no, no. What? No. <laughs> no. Okay, we're going to have to redo it. And round. Ah! Oh, ponytails. I forgot about that. I didn't go that far. Oh, that makes everything cool. Actually, I did a lot of pending tests when I was a kid, so I mean, this may alter the game a little bit. Okay. Already, we're changing things. I end up having glasses much later in my life. We didn't wear dresses on a normal basis. All right. Ooh, and name. Okay, there we go. There we go. Done. Okay. We're in. We're in the game. And I will have to say, my voice acting is not that great, but I will try my best to, uh... Ooh, is the music loud? Sorry, boy. Summer in Sunset Bird was a special time of year. You, your usually sleepy town began to bustle. It was a popular tourist destination with people coming all over to enjoy the beach, the weather, and the relaxation that came with both. The smell of the ocean, crisp and salty, hung in the air during three whole months of schoolless vacation with it. During the summer, your mom didn't like you to wander too far outside your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. Smart. 
And I also like that I have two moms. Um, I really like that. Again, you don't see that often in video games. That included the people. Families came and went from the sunset book bird, but they mostly stayed and did what your mom called putting down roots. They built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to the nice young kids who waved when passing their towns. Or stores. Sorry. Going for a walk around town mostly meant that the familiar, friendly residents waved, or asked how your family was, or most often just said hello. So I'm a very shy kid, but let's read through the choices. You really didn't get why they always said, um, had to say hi, they saw you every day, but you nodded back at them anyway. You ended up saying hi to a lot of different people since most of the tourists that came and went every summer were the same ones. You were too anxious to say hi back at most of the other residents that greeted you, but I don't know you well enough to expect that. Um, I had selected this. I would have been very perturbed about it when I was a kid. But nowadays, you know, I usually greet people as I pass by, usually. It was a polite thing to do, after all, and your moms had taught you to always be respectful. Today, there was a man sitting on the curb outside your house. Fight and flight! <laughs> Stranger danger! He was sitting with his head in his hands, his whole body slumped over, and you wonder if it was even a real person, or a statue that had magically sprung up from the ground overnight. Whoever or whatever he was, you had never seen him before. One thing about knowing everyone in Sunset Bird was that people who didn't recognize really, really stood out. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that people who you don't didn't recognize really, really stood out? There's going to be a lot of hiccups here. It was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district, as your mom called it. So for you, not knowing who a total stranger, who a total stranger was, set off a lot of red flags. Your mom's had a talk with you and your big sister, Lizzie, about this kind of situation before. Okay, you hadn't exactly been listening at the time. You think it's okay to talk to new people? No. <laughs> they mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to, but other types of people can help you even if you don't know them. You remember that it's okay to run away if you feel uncomfortable. You don't have to worry about being polite then. Yeah, this is what my mom had taught me when I was a kid. She grew up in a, uh, in a city in San Francisco. And um, growing up here in my hometown, uh, it's a smaller city, bigger town. And um, it's a little bit different. But I was still taught this. You weren't sure about this man yet. Still, you feel it a bit scary knowing that he was blocking the way to your house. Of course! But you were pretty interested. You wanted to know more about what's going on. Whether he was nice or not, you don't want to be bothered. I went with this, because I was a big scaredy cat. In some ways, I am. To this day. You slow down. Your mind racing for ideas had to get past him unseen, but it was too late to escape. There was a split second before your eyes met, and you took in a shaky breath, your eyes darting to the sky, pretending not to st pretending to stare at a bird who was hovering nearby. A uh, hey! His voice startled you and made you jump, but still you didn't look at him. The bird landed on top of a nearby gatepost, and its black feathers ruffled against the gentle breeze. Trying to keep your eyes on it was tough, especially when the man stood up and started making his way towards you. I would run. <laughs> I would run or something. Not wanting to seem too approachable, you folded your arms and stared. Hmm. So unsure about him, but willing to be friendly, you offered the stranger a smile. Your whole body was frozen in place as he approached. I had selected this one. <laughs> uh... Do you live around here? What's your name? You look at the man up and down, taking in his tan skin and relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were relaxed. The way he was acting wasn't. He had sharks on his shorts and a stingray tattoo. You wonder if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. 
While you made your assessment, he looked at you expectantly, waiting to, waiting for an answer to his question. I could say, yeah, I live here. I live right there. My name is Zypher. He continues to say nothing. At this point, I would have said something. Um, uh, I think it was this that I selected. Yeah, I live here. Oh, that's great. He looked happy to hear it, giving you a broad smile. Oh, money. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean $20 bill and cranked in his hand as he held it up to you. Even more confused than before, he looked back at him. Well, can you do me a favor? I, when I first went through this, I had this whole, you know, dare program, stranger danger, you know, say no to drugs and all that stuff running through my head when I was doing my first um, playthrough. So, um, yeah, I would have not liked a total stranger coming up to me, flashing a $10 bill. I would not care for that, you know, so. No. <laughs> My viewpoint about uh, money was quite different than how I am now. I understand now that it is important to get the resources you need to survive. Back then as a kid, since I was taken care of, I didn't care much about money. Hey, can you do me a favor? Nothing bad. Sorry, I should have. Let me start over. He cleared his throat and stood up straighter. From where you were standing, it just made him look creepier. Honestly, this drawing of him made him really, really cute. Um, especially when it's closed and he has that little tiny blush on his um, cheeks. Or actually, more like a um, sunburn on his cheeks. I mean, he's a really cool dude. And he's trying his best. But of course, first impressions really influence your choices here. I have a son. His name is Ko. He's about your age. Now, this is a little rude, but I'll... I'll go on. Um, Ko, that seemed like a strange name for an actual living person to you. You chewed on the inside of your cheek. This guy was, a de was uh, definitely obsessed with water. <laughs> you thought that was pretty cool. I selected this one, because it was cool. You never met anyone with that name. We had moved in across the street, see? He gestured toward the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching the late afternoon sunlight and reflecting off the walls. The gigantic for sale sign was finally gone. It must be Zypher Flair, right? I met your moms earlier, and they told me you were eight just like him, so he shook the $20 bill to bring it back to your attention. A hopeful smile tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try to be friends with the boy? See, this is very sweet of him. He wants to have people be nice with him, his son. But on the other hand, you don't have to bribe kids to do that. Give them candy or something. Just give it a chance and you can keep this. He's a good kid. You you like him. But you but you gotta keep it a secret too, okay? It wouldn't be friendly to say his dad sent you. Um you eye the man. You felt you kind of felt sorry for Cove. Do the other kids really get their parents to pay for friendships? I also selected this one. <laughs> Had your mom's done that for you and Lizzie? The thought made you frown. <laughs> What you say? Want to make a deal? You didn't want the money, was the um, selection I made. No, thank you. Sorry. He deflated enough to notice, but not completely. Are you sure? It won't be so bad. Even if it's just for the summer, that'll be enough. That only made this sound more strange to you. Why does it lasting for the summer matter? When it was clear his initial strategy wasn't going to fly, he tucked the bill back into he tucked the bill into a back pocket and changed the request. 
I get it. You don't have to. Would you be comfortable with he and I coming over for a normal visit? No money involved. Okay, choices. Yeah, I want to meet him. Okay, you can do that. I guess. You have to ask my moms. You didn't answer the man. I went with this because um, my mom in real life did not like strangers coming over. Um, she was, ah, uh, she likes her own personal, personal space and she doesn't really entertain people often. So, um, I went with this. And if everyone was watch, wandering, she's more of a cancer. So she likes having her own private home and space. Usually. His smile got bigger again. His eyes crinkled at the sides. Of course, they invited us er over earlier, but I'd like to ask you too. Well, then I guess you can. I'll bring him by tomorrow. I wanted him to meet and greet with the neighbors today, but, well, I don't know where he's gotten off to. He laughed when he said that, but with the way his face looked, he thought he was actually wanting to cry. Ah. Uh, well, if, if you see him, can you tell him to come on home? He's got a pink cast and glasses. You can't miss it. Sure thing. I can try and okay. And I went sure thing. This definitely wasn't the normal way kids meet, made friends. You knew that, but you were going, you were still going to help. The man smiled and reached out to pat you on the head, paused before doing so, then pulled his hand away instead. Smart. Your moms are already checking around for me. Such a thoughtful group you are. Now I gotta go look. Can't put anyone else to work while I keep sitting here. I thought he might come back in. That's not what's important. I have to go. Thanks again, Cypher, so much. He jogged off down the street without another word. He decided to check the hills behind your house. I also want to note the artwork is so beautiful. The text, the um, graphics, the general art, um, it's all original and it's done so well. Um, I just love how the game is laid out. And already, um, if you are, <laughs> if you're upset with my choices, um, you're more than welcome to stop and play the game yourself. I highly recommend this game. It's a lot of fun. The chirping of crickets and the tall grass greeted you, quiet and familiar. At the top of the hill, you could see the ocean. As you walked, you listened to the crash of the waves on the shore and the seagulls gawking as they settled down for the night. You always loved the ocean. It was so much fun. You loved to hear stories about the sea, about the merfolk and the sea serpents you imagine living far beneath the waves. You didn't enjoy the beach all that much, especially the sand, which got absolutely everywhere. This sounds like Anakin. <laughs> I chose this one. I was really into um, folklore and stories when I was growing up and Greek mythologies. Sometimes you could almost convince yourself you had seen the flash of a shining mermaid's tail in the distance. You took in a deep breath. You wanted to try to relax and couldn't. You weren't sure what, but something told you that you weren't alone, so you glanced around. And there he is. Again, the animation and the art is beautiful. They did a really wonderful job. There was a small, there was a boy sitting on top of one hill, almost completely hidden within the long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, probably just that he wasn't paying attention, 
he hadn't noticed you yet. You watch him a minute longer, feeling a bit like you found a deer in the wild. Though deer didn't have... These are all accurate, by the way. Green hair. Wavy eyebrows. Huge glasses. Pink cast. Sad frowns. I said green hair the first time. But this new boy did. You watch as it flutters softly around his face in the breeze. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward. Another. And then he glanced your way. His aquamarine eyes reflected the light of the moon. You stop, raising a hand to acknowledge him and show you weren't scary. Hi! Hey, space cadet! Are you lost? <laughs> um, I know he's not lost, but um, I'll just say hi. With a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands falling into fists at his sides. I forgot that he was really mad at this time. He didn't say anything, just stared at you in a strange way. He's been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheeks and his knees, soaking the hems of his shorts, and his eyes were still shining with a few more. You obviously caught him off guard. His pink hat seemed to glow in the twilight, though when he caught you, caught you staring at it, he hid his arm behind his back. Something the man earlier had said stuck out to you. Oh? Uh, eyes wide, he steadied you. How do you know that? I could say, I met you, Dan. I'm all knowing and lucky guess. I just simply said, I met you, Dan. Back then. Um, uh, so. Is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the patch of grass surrounding you, his face falling at the prospect. I can believe it is. <laughs> yep, you can't own a hill, you ship your head. I chose with this one. I chose this one, I should say. Uh, why not? How could you? You just do. I had a hill back home. Well, this still isn't mine. Oh. He sat back down with a thumb, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, you sat on the patch of grass next to him. The pure white flowers that covered this hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way they dotted the sky made them seem like flowers, too. The night wind was cool as it traveled over the ocean and up the hill, chasing away the heat from the afternoon sun. So I could say why you're here, or why your fa family moved, and I'm trying to remember what I did last time. Ah. <laughs> uh... I think... It was this. I'm trying to remember. If I can't remember the choices I made back then, um, I try to recollect what I would have said as a kid. So I'm going to cho choose this. A quiet hiccup escaped Cove as, you, as soon as he asked the question. Almost like they never stopped, his tears started up again with a vengeance. My parents... They don't want to live together with me anymore. The tears fell fast and heavy over his flushed cheeks, sticking in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave, took me with him, and now we have a home here. I want to go home. I said home twice, sorry. The outburst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was heaving with exhaustion. He sniffled and removed his glasses, wiping at his eyes with the back of his hand and putting them back on again. I hate this place. I want my real life back. I want my mom. 
I'm sorry. Your dad seems kind of nice. You'll like it here. You just have to get used to it. That's a little bit harsh. Even harsher is to stop crying. So, um, I should go, I'm sorry. He slipped his hands underneath his glasses and pressed his fingers against his eyelids. Poe wound himself up again for another long crying fit. You felt bad for him, being forced to come here with no choice. I can imagine what it would feel like to live with only one of your moms. But it must be pretty hard. But from way off in the distance, you heard your parents. Cypher! Go! Kids, where did you go? Hope looks at you, tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're in here. I don't want to go back to that house. I want to go home. You could handle it. <laughs> You're a bum. You just got to put up with it. You can handle this, kid. <laughs> no kidding. Um, you have to go. Don't worry so much. Sorry, I have to. And it will be okay. Um, so those are the choices. Um, you can see how there's so much branching. And how things are going to happen. But I went, sorry, I have to. Stretching as you stood, you tilt your head back down to look at Cove. I can't lie to my mom about where you are, you know. They're gonna tell him. Slowly, Cove stood up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad's voice rang out again. Oh, can you hear me? He looked toward the sound of his dad's voice, silent heard away while rubbing his non-bandaged arm. Sorry, I still don't want to go. You called out yourself. You waited silently with him. You tried to convince him. Um, I remember doing this in my first playthrough. Wanting to go home, you raised your own voice. Over here! Hope's face soured said nothing, but his thoughts were probably pretty nasty at that moment. The trio of parents appeared over the curve of the hill. Instantly, all of their eyes landed on you and they rushed over. Again, again, um, this whole thing is so beautiful with how they did the character. I really love it. Both of your moms were at the side in a split second. Faces filled with worry. Zypher, you're here after all. So the woman on the left? Oh, the woman on the right is mom. And the woman on the left is mommy. So mom, mommy. We have been at the park to check for Cove. Then I heard what happened earlier when you met the new neighbor. I thought you might have gone up further away. No, we were just sitting in the grass. Why is everyone acting like this is such a big deal? We're okay, don't worry. Cope didn't go home just yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Cope didn't want to go home just yet. I could say that. Um, I forgot what I selected. I think it was this. Why is everyone acting like this is such a big deal? We didn't know where you went. We were worried. Yes, thank God you're both fine. Were you two having fun out here? You looked over at Cove, who was wiggling against the dad, his dad's tight hug and pushing at his arms. He shrugged. Yes, I like him. Uh... <laughs> Hmm, he's good. I think I'm going to marry him. <laughs> I just went, um... <laughs> you didn't think that was the right word to describe it, but weren't sure what else to say to your moms. Oh yeah, he's mad. 
Finally letting go of his squirming, scowling son, Cove's dad turned to the three of you. Thanks so much for finding him. I really didn't know this neighborhood. Well, good thing Cypher knows this whole area so well. Absolutely. We should be getting home now. It's been a long day for all of us. Say goodbye, Cove. Bye. Okay. There were moments in this whole uh, visual novel where um, they had um, taken up the corners with the beautiful animation. I really didn't want to interfere with that. So, um, I will be moving my screen um, just in case that happened. I thought it was going to happen, but it didn't. So, um, but yeah, uh, my web camera is going to move um, around quite a bit on this um, playthrough. The two of them walked down the darkness, heading towards the neighborhood. You watch Cove's bright pink cast until it disappeared. Hmm. hmm, tell you what, we'll have a proper play day tomorrow, okay? Your new friend's dad wanted to bring him by to see you and Lizzie. How does that sound? Sure, can I show him my stuff? It sounds like words. <laughs> you nodded, ducking your head down. I went with this one. Of course. Then, okay. Nothing for your mom's laughed. The sounds of a laughing into a warm, familiar chorus. Mommy put her hand, put her arm around your shoulder, and led you towards the path. Satisfied and more than a little ready to go to bed after a long, exciting day, you followed them home. So this is where the comfort levels um, happens. Um, this is what they're talking about. Check the timing. No, I think this is a good time to stop. And we're gonna go, oh no, 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 no. We're gonna save. And that's where we're going to end it for this Friday. Um, we're going to continue on this series um, throughout the rest of um, this February and probably into March. I will upload it once a week. And um, I hope you guys like it. This is a nice story. Um, I'm going to see how it changes and forms based on my choices. Um, if you like this, please give me a like. If you uh, want to subscribe to my channel, it's totally free. Um, you could totally um, hit that button and it won't be any uh, cost to you, unlike on Twitch. Um, I also have a Twitch channel. I um, do it on the weekends, on Saturday and Sunday. Um, depending on how things go in the future, that may change to just Saturdays only. Just a heads up. Um, Let's see. I really like this game. I love the um, artwork. I love the graphics. Um, it's very crisp and clean. Um, I like the story thus far. I really, really like Cove. But we're going to stop here for a second and um, pick it up next time. So thank you. And I'll see you next week. Bye.